and uh, JJ, who's uh, situated in uh, South Africa. So welcome, John and uh, JJ. And uh, I will uh, hand over the presentation to you guys. And uh, we'll kick start off uh, with a few questions. And then uh, we'll have a look at your uh, uh, tools. Is this for a long time? Um, uh, tell, tell us something about uh, how did you get started in the SEO business? Okay, yeah. I've been doing internet marketing um, full time since uh, 1999, which is like makes me a, a dinosaur, <laughs> I suppose, in the internet marketing space. And uh, it all started off uh, actually when Jay was younger. My wife took him to see a homeopath and was telling him about um, this website that I built. I bought a book. And uh, I read dial up stuff in those days, you know, it was still really slow. But I bought a book on HTML and I made a website for my business. We used to have a business called, uh, well, we still have it. In fact, my daughter and my son in law uh, run it now. Um, but it, uh, it was called uh, Printing Self Adhesive Labels. Oh. And uh, we did um, we had lots of customers like, in the cosmetic industry, industry and the pharmaceutical industry, but anyway, I uh, that I guess in the days before Google. So, um, but I managed to get my website ranking number one in the world for um, the uh, for the term self adhesive labels because that was our, our business. It was in Yahoo, you know, it was still like a direct. So it was quite. Uh, yeah, I thought it was really brilliant. But anyway, um, so she was bragging to the doctor about this. And he said, you know, I've got a product that I think we could sell. And it was for a product for a condition called tinnitus or tinnitus, depending on where you are in the world, how it gets pronounced. And that is a ringing in the ears. I'd never heard about it. But anyway, so I built a website. Wow. And in those days, things are very different to rank, you know. Um, you basically built links, any links. And uh, so for about 10 years, we built a whole um, industry. Everybody started copying and uh, creating, making tinnitus websites and tinnitus books and all sorts of... What do you think has changed over when, when you started and now? There are some who still swear that nothing has changed. It's the same. Uh, you still have to do all that uh, research to get good content out there, get the good links. But there are others now who say, okay, things have changed. What do you think has, has well, anything changed? Yes, uh, one thing has changed is that Google got, uh, um, you know, around 2006, I think it was called the Penguin Update. Mm. Uh, they um, we had one and a half million links to the site. Wow! Because if you got if you wanted links, you just went and got links. You know, you did any sort of links, and they all counted. Mm. So um, we, uh, you know, we would we were having like three thousand visitors a day to the site, mm. and selling a hell of a lot of this stuff. And then one day, in, in I think it was about two thousand and six. Um, or 2007, they just closed the door, closed the door on us. Wow. They even closed my AdWords account. They, uh, and, you know, they were not coming back because one and a half million links to try to clean it up, it's just too much. Mm. Um, when I spoke to them, I said, well, what's wrong? They said, no, you've got bad links. So I said, okay, well, which are the bad ones? Which are the bad links? And they said, no, they're the bad ones. So... Uh, <laughs> So there was definitely, uh, there's definitely be some change. Um, we had to uh, find out what it was and start marketing using the new Google, um, you know, the, the new rules, play by the new rules. But if you're making normal websites, um, like HTML websites or blog websites and that, you, uh, you, you're still very much controlled by Google. Uh, Google links, you know, look, things like the, the length of your title and, um, you know, 
duplicate content, that sort of stuff. Mm. Whereas, if you make Google sites, you know, the length of your titles don't make any difference. Duplicate content, well, they don't believe in banning themselves or penalizing them. The biggest shift we've seen in the last 10 years, the biggest shift has probably been Google moving away from strings, which is 10 websites on the front page mm. with listings mm. to entities and things. Mm. And what we mean by that is with the emergence of Google My Business and the way that the search engine results page has evolved in the last couple of years, you know, it's become a kind of an online land grab where Facebook's trying to keep you within the Facebook ecosystem, but Google's doing the same thing. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think just to give that some context, you know, people need to understand Google is an advertising company. Okay, mm. that's how they make their money, primarily. So if the search results pages are delivering 10 crap results, people are going to stop using the search results, you know, the search engine to find the information, and then they're not going to get eyeballs on their ads, eyeballs mm. and clicks. So Google has been, you know, they've also evolved and they've become very clever in themselves you know, where I think 2007, 2008, with the LSI and semantically related words, they became very conversational. I think that's also the way users were using the search engine. So every time somebody goes to Google and types in a search, Google is taking that data and actually monitoring it and seeing what they're searching for, how many words they're using in the search, you know. Um, and I think as things have progressed, more and more people, especially with mobile, um, and, you know, if you're looking into the future, when you start thinking of voice, more and more people are asking Google questions, which they never used to do. So before, if someone was interested in, you know, a plumber, for example, they put the word plumber into Google. But now as consumer behavior has changed, people are now putting in plumber near me in my town because they know that they want something that's relevant. And then Google is serving the most relevant answer. Uh, John, um, JJ, how did you get into this? Uh, was it to help dad? Uh, how, uh, how, did, uh, how, how did the whole love for SEO come about? How, yeah, how well, basically, you... I just finished playing, playing soccer ah. um, professionally as a career, came back to South Africa from overseas. Mm. And my dad had this website hobby, mm. um, you know, and we had these products. They so said, well, I need some help. Come help me here. So I used to pack the pack the packets and send it out, and we used to post it. Ah. And then you know it was it was very interesting that we were dominating in the search engines. Two guys from South Africa who knew very little about search engines. Mm. Um, and you know we thought we were very clever at first because it was very easy. You know you build a site, you put a few H1 tags, H2 tag, um, and you shot straight up to the top. So initially it was you know kind of helping out. And then as kind of Google came into the picture and kind of swallowed the search engine space, um, you know, at first it was also quite simple. If you did things that they told you in a certain manner, you ranked very well. Um, but the same with anything, as competition kind of grows and more people get online and start doing the same things, um, we started attending quite a lot of seminars and masterminds, you know, search engine land and actually learning how Google was evolving. And I think after basically Google shutting down our, our e-commerce business, um, you know, we had to reverse engineer why, why we got penalized. Mm -hmm. And in that kind of mad scientist mode where we disappeared for a couple of months and really digged into what was happening and why it was happening, mm -hmm. we then started learning new ways and methods of doing things the way Google wants you to. So I'm. Uh, how has it been working for uh, your dad? Is he a tough taskmaster? What have we learned from him? Does he treat you the same way he treats uh, other employees? Uh, or he has a special bias? Uh, and let's go to all the mistakes you make. Well, I think I think he's friendlier to the other employees than mm. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's been fun. You know, we've we've worked together for years, and you know. Mm. Um, in South Africa, in general, we're very entrepreneurial as a nation. Mm. Um, and I think that's due to the high unemployment rate generally. So, you know, most people in South Africa start your own business. Mm. So we, we've been around that our whole life growing up. So it's been a really seamless transition. 
and uh, John, there is a big confusion even to today because possibly the way Google has named it as uh, Google Sites, and then they also have named the uh, the website within the Google My Business, and uh, people call that uh, Google My Business uh, website or business dot site. So I'll just have a, I just have a few things uh, um, to present. So uh, do you anticipate any problems? for the work that you're doing because of the sunsetting? What we've done is any previous Google stacks, or Google Drive stacks that we have built using the classic site, we've converted them to the new site now. Oh, okay. um, it's quite a simple process. Um, if you just search it up in Google, they'll show you how to do it. It's, it's three or four steps. Okay. And then what, what we found is when you do convert it, you might have to go and edit one or two things um, because it throws a few of the styling elements out, but not a major job. It takes five to ten minutes. Excellent. Um, so I would definitely suggest if you've got any Google sites that are still on the classic sites, morph them over to the new sites as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, it's still got all the power, and the new sites have actually got some more design elements that we've started then adding into it. So, you know, they're all fine and well to rank. But what we found is we've had Google sites that rank really well that didn't really convert that well. Um, so the new sites that we build in, we always spend a little bit of time manually making it look better because if someone lands on it, we want them to take a call to action. You know, so we've actually turned the Google site, the sites.google Google site, into another lead gen between oh, yes. those two. The yes. difference between those two is the dot business site which is the free site that comes within the Google My Business, that site you can't add pages to. Yeah. So it, it is a free site. It is a very powerful resource. It's very important in our system where we publish posts on the GMB regularly. Those posts, although they disappear from the GMB after seven to 10 days, they live on the dot .business site permanently. So every post you make on your GMB becomes a URL that lives on the .business site permanently. So we use that site and those post URLs to fire links at, to fire up everything in our process. So the .business site and the GMB is part of the actual branding of a brand of an entity. And what it is, it's just another layer of information to give Google the entity information that we wanted to have. So it'll have the name, address, phone number, it'll have the areas that we serve, and then every post that gets posted on that entity's GMB then lives on that Google.business site forever. So that's the purpose of the .business site. The Google sites that we build, we use for another reason, and those we build out because that you actually got a lot more flexibility. You can build out multiple G sites, for powering up one GMB listing or one money site. So often in our... Okay, now that, uh, that, uh, that used to be true when um, the classic sites were all that you can build. Mm. The sites that you can build now um, are, you can build any, um, on, on the new ones, you can make, most people wouldn't even know it's a Google site if they didn't look at the URL. That's what we do. So our software sort of builds, uh, builds uh, uh, the, the Google site, and um, you know it's got all the elements, and it will rank and all that, but uh, it doesn't look so beautiful. So but the basic, uh, we've got everything that we need, but it, it builds um, the same as what uh, Elementor does, or uh, um, you know Beaver Builder, those type of websites. Uh, or even Wix, it builds things in blocks. Okay, so um, you can then, and it's got everything that you can do um, in um, in Wix or uh, any one of those sites, but it doesn't have all the bloated con uh, bloated coding. Okay, it's Google sites, and they're very, very uh, clean and neat. And because the sites live on Google.com. They actually, um, I think. I think before we get on that one, your question to why Google sites rank better than Wix, WordPress, all those free website builders. If you have a look at this diagram, if you look at the domain there, if we put it into Ahrefs, 
you've got a domain rating of 93 mm. okay so when you build all your links and what we do is we use the power of our frames to create do follow mm. links when you build links your links are coming from a domain rating of 93 into your money site mm. so if you had a wix website and you built it out the domain rating of that would probably be five so you know then yeah. if you say why do google sites rank better than those other free website builders it's because of the authority that is coming from the domain and to sum that up in one sentence google is very narcissistic google loves google the most so what we're doing is we're creating everything within google using google from trusted entities so a site on google connected to a gmb that's validated Google can then say, okay, so this business is a validated, trusted entity because they've confirmed themselves and validated themselves with Google My Business. So now when we connect a Google site that is connected to that entity, it's coming from a domain, which is very powerful. Plus, it's very easy for them to connect the dots with the trusted entity. So it's much harder to get an entity on Wix or on WordPress for Google to connect the dots with that entity without Google My Business or geo relevance, niche relevance, brand prominence, and traffic to the GMB. So if we touch on the first one, it's geo relevance, which is proximity. So it's driven by proximity, which is the distance from the searcher to your business. Okay. So in order to make sure we touch in this, you need to make sure your website's optimized for the areas that you serve. You've mentioned the area and all the content that you have on the site as well as syndicated online. You're linking out to that actual place in Google, in maps.google. You've built point-to-point -point driving directions. So what that does, those point-to-point -point driving directions is we create a geo ring around the business. So say 10 mile radius around the business. We then build out point-to-point -point driving directions from each of those locations back into our business. And what this is doing is mimicking real life behavior. So we show in Google that our entity or our business is prepared to drive to that location to service these clients. And what that does is then create a geo ring fence around your GMB, which you can keep increasing as you keep building out and increasing the proximity. We also build out GDocs and PDFs, one for each keyword and area, and we drive the local traffic back into the GMB. So for the second ranking factor, that's niche relevance. So this, you need to make sure that your on-site SEO is correct and you've got everything optimized. Um, we've got semantically related terms on the website. We need to have the website architecture right. And what I mean by that is not only the internal linking structure, but also the way the schema markup is set up. Because through schema now, we can actually give the bot everything that we want to about the business, the entity, the products it offers, the service it offers, and the areas that we serve all within the schema markup now. So we need to make sure that the website's correct, the GMB listings optimized, and the Google sites that we build are, you know, the, the architecture's right. We build out videos, as we said, YouTube is a trusted entity. So in the descriptions of videos, we build unstructured citations. We create and build out the Google.business site, as we've already mentioned, where the posts live for everywhere, uh, live forever. And then we syndicate content online with images and keyword rich text, linking back into where we want to link to build that relevance. You then have brand prominence. So this is also, um, it touches on your previous question where you mentioned some people just build a single Google site and expect that to rank. So if you think of that, one Google site is one little square in the whole, whole of the web, okay? So what we do is we've got the, mon the money site, which is one square, the dot business site, which is another square, the GMB listing, which is another square. Then we've got all the Google sites. So we've got the branded Google site. So you've got four squares there already. Plus you've got a syndication ring. You've got your press releases. We create at ID pages. So we turn in that one square into eight or nine squares. And each of those assets have the brand name, the logo, some images, they all interlink with each other. So straight away, our footprint to Google as a brand, the entity, has grown by tenfold, simply by just increasing the footprint that we show in there. 
and all of that information. So that's in a very simplistic way how, you know, we outperform someone who's just building one site. Because if you look at it, Google looks at them and looks at us and thinks, okay, well, they've got all this information about the entity and it's all interlinking and firing each other up. And this other one's got one site, which must be the most relevant entity. It'll be the one with the more information. So that's how that works. Okay. And then building traffic into the GMB is a factor. Um, so you can build, the more CTR you get on your GMB, the actual more engagement you get. So a couple of little ninja tricks for that. You could run Facebook ads at a geo-targeted area and direct that traffic straight into the GMB. Now you only need five or 10 clicks a week for this traffic to start having an impact. So you know you can, very little money spent, you could send people from that area to the GMB. The more people from the area that will land on the GMB and engage. So the four main ranking factors. Oh, okay, go ahead. All right. So now if we move on to an actual Google site that was built out, you can see all the different elements of those four main ranking factors that we cover in the Google site. So we have a link using the keyword into the GMB. We've got an optimized banner with a call to action. We've got a video with a call to action. And we've got a link into the money site. We've also got area pages for local geo relevance. So if we move further down on the site, you can see we've actually embedded the money site so that we're passing do follow links back into the business. We've got a geo optimized image embedded from the GMB post as well as some content. If we move further down, the content continues. And then we've got an additional link which links into the drive stack. Plus, we've embedded a my map, which has got all the information that we need. And we put the name and address, the map details on every single page. So you can see that's on the home page of the site. If we had a look at one of the inner pages, you can see how the keyword changes so that the keyword is targeting the keyword plus the area, which is, again, linking back into the GMB. You've got a video. Now, if we had a video that's targeting that exact keyword and area, it would be better to embed that video. Um, if we go further down the page, we've got an H1 tag, we've got another link to the money site, a geo-optimized image, and then here we've got the actual place ID. So that's the place ID that Google assigned that place on maps.google. It's, again, just another bit of information that, that Google can use to make us relevant to that area. We then have the point-to-point -point driving direction maps, which I was talking about. So you could see this map is the driving directions from this area back into the business. Okay, and again, we have the nap then at the bottom of every page. So you can see how powerful these Google sites are and how much geo relevance and information we give in Google to help them connect the dots to say we're relevant for that area for these sets of keywords. Um, the people that are building them correctly are ranking very, very well. Um, and by, by saying building them correctly, the people that are building proper, unique content. So every single page of the mass page, um, there's very few elements that are the same from one page to the next. That is a secret. Okay. And this is how we are building our, um, we're building our Google sites very similar to, um, to what the mass page guys are. Uh, we're just um, using really good content in Google. And then uh, what we also do is we, we pay attention to uh, the on-page um, SEO of, uh, of the Google sites. And so we're basically giving Google what they want. We're giving them um, the content that they like and really good um, uh, good looking sites and we are embedding one must talk about embedding we are embedding google properties that we built prior to this that's related to this website um we're embedding them on the google pages a ton of embeds on no okay. so when we build out the google drive stack assets um when we build the google sites we embed the drive stack assets in as many places as possible so if we've got 30G sites that we've built, we've used as many embeds as possible across all the sites. Um, and the reason we do that is that iframe embed is passing a do follow link from a trusted Google entity
back into another trusted Google entity, whether it be a doc, a sheet, a form, a drawing, um, you know, and I'll show you as we go through the presentation just how powerful each of those are and why the system is so powerful. What does this additional power of Google properties, what does it, uh, what difference does it make? Okay, well, you know, uh, your GMB can only be found over, normally, it can only be found over a short distance, five, you know, five miles or 10 miles uh, it can rank um, for a lot of keywords. So what we do is uh, our GMB Genius software, we actually build like Jay was saying, these uh, many hyper-local sites that target an area. So you would have, uh, say now you have 10 keywords you would build that you want to rank for. You'd build 10 hyper-local sites. And I'm sure Joe will show you in the, in the presentation that he has. Um, so <coughs> it could be like plumber, emergency plumber, and clog, remove clog drains or whatever. And then it could be that, that keyword, emergency plumber plus the area. And then emergency uh, plumber plus another area. All uh, around the... Um, the specific area where your GMB is located. But um, and now we go on with the client, we start moving those to areas that are further and further away from the GMB. And this is why we can eventually get one GMB to rank over. A As we've mentioned, the big shift in Google. So they've moved away from strings towards entities and things. So I think we've explained that briefly. Um, but what that means is, you need to have a validated, trusted entity, okay? So if your entity, which is your business, is validated and trusted, Google then rewards you with better rankings. Now, the reason we do everything through Google and in the Google ecosystem is we giving them layers upon layers upon layers from trusted Google entities information about our business so that they can start to see that, yes, okay, so, they say who they are on the GMB, but it's also listed on these 10 places that are trusted. So they say, okay, then that carries more weight. Every trusted entity, they can find information about your business. I'll be quick. So the big shift and something we all need to be aware of is Google trusts Google the most. Okay. Okay. So the most two trusted Google entities are GMB post images. And that's because it's coming off a validated entity. Okay. And YouTube videos. And there's no surprise that YouTube, uh, Google owns both of those. <laughs> so just to show you the power of the system and why we use Google properties, if you look here, he has two Google sites. So Domain Authority 93, Domain Authority 93, so very powerful. If we have a look here, this is a Google Sheet, Domain Authority 95. This is a Google Drawing, Domain Authority 95. Now, as you can see in these images here, on these properties, we've got a ton of links a ton of keywords all pointing into our money assets. Okay. If we move on, Google Slides, domain rating of 95. My Maps, which is a very powerful tool and something that you build out that we highly recommend, that's got a domain rating of 98. So you can see the power in when we build and we're getting links from these properties, they're coming from trusted high authority domains. So the juice that they pass carries a lot more weight then say from a PBN that was built on WordPress, where the domain authority has hardly any power and you're building links, Google has just discounted those. It's become very easy for them to cut that away and just discount the value of those links. We also use Amazon S3 and the cloud. And the reason we do use that is have a look at this. The domain authority of those is 93. Um, and what we do with those pages is we actually embed other pages and then fire links at the cloud pages. So another very important part of our strategy, um, and I suppose it's the key component of everything that we do is iframes. So what do iframes actually do? So if you have one do follow link from an iframe to a page that has many embeds, Google's bot will follow each of those iframed embeds, okay? So basically you can think of an embedded iframe as a door to a new room. And the Google bots are programmed to collect the data from these rooms. Now, every iframe they enter, we provide in the bot with all the entity information that they need. 
So they don't need to go much further. They follow the iframe, they spider everything. And again, it's just reassurance. So they see it on one page and they say, okay, so JJ's entities X, Y, and Z, because it says so on this page, let's follow this iframe. They go down into that iframe and they see it's another trusted entity, but it's got the same entity information again. So we're giving them the information over and over and over on trusted entities. And because these iframes fast do follow links, the bots follow. So if you look at the image here on the left, it's basically like when you're sitting at the barber in the barber's chair and you look in the mirror and you see the reflection of mirrors behind you. This is what we're sending Google's bot in. We're sending them down a loop-de-loop -loop of iframes stacked with all our entity information so that we send in the bot exactly where we want them to go to not only spider the entity information, but also provide relevance on different keywords. So I think the biggest thing that we find when we're working with GMBs is people might do well for one singular keyword because it's often what the business name is called and they rank for that and only that. And that's because their brand prominence and their niche relevance is not up to date. Okay? So a quick little fact. Can I just say something there? Yeah, jump Sorry, in. Jay. Uh, um, uh, as we, we have been on multiple courses, spent thousands of dollars, and um, this iframe, um, iframe stacking, as you can see, uh, uh, we have learned from uh, the guys in Semantic Mastery and um, the Heavy Hitters Club, and um, where they, they, they uh, you know, it's very expensive courses, but they don't show you something unless they've proven it. And what we've done is we've just taken uh, their, their concept or their, their, how they've proven it. And we've taken it to another level completely because we've automated it. Um, some of the auto automation that we're doing in Stacking Magic, it's never been seen before. Okay, so... It's, it's, it's actual proven, the, the, these art plans that, that yeah. they prove, they, that they pass do follow links, there's no doubt about it, um, you know, yeah. that really works. Um, because these guys have been testing it for ages, so have we. And uh, that is why uh, this, this, set, this what, what he's talking about there is so extremely important. Okay, so yeah. you, just to put that into into perspective for you, you know, Google sites, the one limitation that we have is you can't add schema markup to the Google site anymore. Um, you used to be able to, but now it's not working so well. It's a bit glitchy. They, they, they might be bringing it back. But to explain to you the power of the iframes, we've got a little ninja hack where if we've got schema markup on the money site, all we do is embed the money site onto the homepage of the G site, okay? And then when you put the G site URL through the structured data testing tool, mm. it picks up the schema. And it's picking up the schema from within that iframe. So it shows you how powerful those iframes are, that when Google hits the Google site, they're actually picking up the schema markup from an embed wow. within the Google site. So yeah. that's how powerful the iframes are, and that's what our whole strategy and system is built on. Excellent. So just a quick fact. Yeah. Did you know that 46% of all searches on Google are local? And according to the latest research, the Maps Pack grabs as much as 44% of the search engine results page traffic. So this is why we dived head in into GMB, Google My Business, and getting it ranking. And then through ranking multiple GMBs, we noticed that if you do things in a certain order, it not only gets you to dominate the map pack for multiple keywords in multiple areas, but it also increases your organic traffic and the money site performance dramatically. What this also does for us is it allows us to not worry about the algorithm updates. So, you know, we're not, we're not held ransom every time Google makes an update. We've actually seen across the board clients and our websites that we're actually gaining traffic when they do an update, which is good. So how do you dominate in Google's map pack? So if when we run through this, you will see how everything that we build within the Google ecosystem fires each other up, all right? So we start with the money site. We make sure that that's optimized. It's got all the area pages that are necessary. It's got the schema markup the way we want it. 
Um, we optimize the DMB and we optimize the Google.business website. Okay. We then create regular posts on the GMB, which get shared to Twitter, which then triggers syndication network one. So this is a branded syndication network that is named the exact same name as the company, the entity. Mm -hmm. It's got the logo, it's got the images, and they're all interlinked. We would then build out the second Google site, which would be a branded G site. And on that Google site, we embed the GMB and the driving direction maps from each location back into the business. Okay. Okay. We then build out the Google Drive stack. So that branded G site becomes the, the Google site at the center of the Google Drive stack. Okay. We then build out all these Google properties, sheets, my maps, drawings, forms, docs, PDFs, slides, calendar, and YouTube videos. All those assets then get embedded onto the drive, the, the G site, okay? Um, and then we set up syndication network two, so that every time this drive stack gets updated, that triggers the blogger account that's connected to it and it syndicates across that syndication network. So we're firing links back into the assets in the drive stack. We then build out on an age domain, a WordPress site where we add 50 to 100 topically relevant videos per month. Mm. These videos help us build topical relevance for semantically related keywords. Um, and in the actual post, the, the content of the posts on these, we embed a YouTube video, plus we've got our own software where we create content files that have multiple embeds within them so that they get inserted into these posts. Every time this feed gets updated, a trigger syndication network too. Then, Every page that gets built onto this WordPress site, we then take that using Stacking Magic and embed the entire page onto a new page on the G site. So that same branded G site then also keeps growing 50 to 100 a month where we're actually building new pages using the semantically related keywords from the top ranking YouTube videos. It creates a page on the Google site and embeds that entire WordPress page on it. What wow. that is, is an embed of multiple embeds. So you can see how we're starting to stack the R-frame embeds in this process. JJ. Right. So these I've got here 10 just for the sake of fitting it on this diagram. But if you wanted to rank for 20, 30 keywords, you could build 20, 30 G sites. Each of these key, this would be keyword specific plus the location. So it would be plumber, emergency plumber, commercial plumbing, plus the locations. And as you can see on the right, we embed all the drive stack assets, we embed driving directions maps, we embed relevant YouTube videos, plus we embed the GMB listing, the actual map, and we add the NAP details, which is the name, address, phone number on every single page. Okay, we then have press releases where we stack the press releases. So the first press release embeds the GMB, the second press release links to the, uh, the first press release links to the branded G site, and it also links to the money site. The second press release links to the first one and the third press release links to the second one. Okay. So that we stack in that power, firing up the first press release with all the entity information that we need. Okay. We then have um, cloud pages where we build HTML pages um, and upload them to the cloud. So the four cloud services, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and DigitalOcean. And again, on these, because the HTML pages, we can add schema markup, we embed all the drive stack assets, we embed the driving directions, YouTube videos, the GMB listing, we add the NAP details, and we embed the money site. Okay. And the reason we do that is we're getting a do follow link from the four most powerful domains in the world coming back into our money site. We then start firing links at all the assets that we've created. So that, in essence, is our done-for-you service. This is a six-month project that we'd run through this entire strategy document. And you could see with all the information and all the details that we give in Google on trusted Google assets and coming from really powerful domains, all pointing up into the GMB, the dot business site and the money site, that's how everything starts to rank. Um, and in doing this, you can fire tons of links at all these assets to keep it, to keep firing up the stack. Um, in the cloud, um, there is uh, a program that does it. Um, I'm not quite remember what it's called, and Doxia or something like that. Stexia. Is that it? Yeah. Stexia. Yeah. But that, that limits you to one Gmail account. 
Mm. Okay. Because it's so expensive. Yeah. The, this is unlimited. You can do as many as you like. You know, you can have yeah. hundreds of Gmail accounts. Good, good point. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me share so, my screen. Okay. So we'll talk about GMB Genius first. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yes. It's coming. Okay. All right, so GMB Genius um, is a software that is made up of a lot of different modules. And um, um, you, when you when you run it, you would um, run them uh, one after the other. But uh, like where it says, you can see Geo Genius is highlighted. That is the module that will create the um, the Google site for you, okay. And uh, what I say, um, when you um, when you run it, um, it opens up a little uh, little box which has got uh, all the entry fields, and um, so you you would put in all the details that it needs, and then you click save, and it puts it into a MySQL database, and it uses um, that. That, that really um, to create the G site. Um, that's uh, and, and uh, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Calendar, basically all the same. Cloud stacking poster, it's also that. So what happens there is uh, you need to put in your Amazon S3 logins, your credentials, um, uh, same for uh, for um, digital. Ocean and the fourth one is what's other one? I don't know. Google, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I cannot forget that. But those are extremely powerful because those uh, domains uh, they get spidered, you know, all day, every day, and uh, and they're all very, very high ranking. So um, you know, you you create your bucket, and uh, then the software um, it has an HTML creator. Um, page creator, so you can create your pages and put spin tags in, you can spin everything, or you can select a previously created file, um, which is, um, that, that's how we're doing it now, and we use um, Curator Contender for that. But you don't need Curator Contender, you can do it all just here in GMB Genius. So, um, you know, depending on how many areas you've got, um, you know, uh, creating a Google site like this can take an, between an hour and two hours. Um, because, you know, if, if it's the first time you're creating for a client and uh, you haven't got the area details, um, you'll first go and scrape. Um, all of the area details. So these are it'll create driving directions from uh, point to point driving directions. It'll find places of interest, um, restaurants, that type of thing. Um, so that when it creates the page, it'll add that information onto the page. Um, in addition to um, the actual S the SEO stuff that you want, which is like the link to the GMB, the link to the, um, the money site. Um, keyword rich uh, title. Um, I think that's about it. The, uh, you know, Google Docs creates, you can create as many docs as you like. Uh, again, that, uh, that would run off a, uh, um, could run off a uh, um, CSV. CSV file or uh, an, an input area where you just input your, your information. Everything can be spun. The same with slides and the, sli the same with calendar. Calendar is very interesting because um, you don't have 24 hours in a day, so you have 48 half hour slots. So for each half hour slot that you have, you can create a new event, um, which is totally spun, so it'll change all the time. So in 48 hours, you can create 40, 40 Eight events and uh, Google spiders spot is this all the time. So as a new event comes, uh, Google comes back and it spiders that new event. And uh, you can create so much uh, linking power with uh, just with the calendar. 
So Genius is gmbgenius.com. Um, the software is there. And the reason we created the software is in the process where we create all those Google assets, it all can be done by hand. But if you're working for multiple clients or you're in a niche that's really tough and you have to create multiple G sites, multiple docs, you know, multiple things, we wanted something that would automate that process so that it does the heavy lifting for you. So if you're working on 10 clients, you can set it up once, let it run, and it builds everything for you on autopilot. There is some manual you know, interaction to make everything work, but that, that's the main reason that we built the software was yeah. to automate the heavy lifting. Exactly. So if we scroll down, you can see there's the price. So it's $97 up front and $37 a month or $747 one off lifetime payment. Um, if you need anything or want to reach out, jj at gmbgenius.com, send me a mail. We are to help you out, whether you're interested in buying the software or the done for you service. Mm. Yeah. We, we have to update that. the software. Yeah, we have to update the software, you know, one, two, three, four times a month. It just depends on how often Google depends to change things, decides to change things. And uh, so uh, the, um, the recurring, that that's the reason for the recurring. We use this for our own business. You know, we, we've got weight loss sites uh, where we sell weight loss products. We've got all sorts of websites that we, we sell. So we're not really software people. We're actually marketers who uh, tell coders what to do, and they do it, and then we use that software to, to rank. A CSV from data that it pulls from the CSV. It's all spun data, um, and you can create a document or you can create 50 documents that will be completely unique, uh, uh, the keyword that it's uh, targeting and the area that it's targeting can change all the time. Um, images can change, everything can change. The whole idea of um, creating docs for Stacking Magic is to create content that we can use on our Google site um, that uh, Stacking Magic will create for us. So what uh, what it does is it creates the documents, the Google Docs, and then downloads it and then uploads them as PDFs. Okay, then um, that this is all it. happens uh, within the document. a Google folder. Yes, well, one shared Google folder. Okay, now Google Docs and PDFs, obviously you can't have any embeds in that. Um, so we need other things to, uh, because this is the power of it, of, of stacking it. it. It could actually, you know, it, it refers to stacking our frames, really. Okay, so um, the next module is create G-Site from the G-Drive. So using the same information in that original CSV, um, you would just uh, select create uh, G-Site from G-Drive. And what it'll do is it'll create a, a a G site with, um, with you know the proper name, whatever you wanted, and every single one of the the documents that was created in the first uh, module gets embedded on a page of its own in the new G site, and it's it's called exactly the same as what the what the document title is. Okay, and the same goes for uh, for the PDFs. So uh, if you have like 40, 40 Google documents targeting different keywords, you would immediately have 40 pages in your, in your G site. Um, and you'd have, uh, well, you'd have 80 because you'd have 40 for the docs and 40 for the PDFs. Okay. Um, the next module is a really exciting module. Um, we've called it WordPress Revitalizer. So what we do there, um, you could take a, uh, a blog that you have and create content um, which has um, embeds in the content. Or you can use the software that we're actually using called Curator Contender. Um, and that embeds um, you know, from anywhere, um, but mainly the Google documents, the Google PDFs, the Google um, slides, Google those sort of things, Google properties, Google assets. Okay, it, it takes that and it creates a file that is got uh, 
topically re- related content. You were talking about content just now, so we're looking at that. But it's got uh, it's got videos on. It's got and it's also got curated content. So um, prior to running the campaign, um, on the bottom yeah, uh, bottom of this little drop down list, you can see a news scraper. So if you were running a uh, a campaign, say on uh, fly fishing, you, you would go to the news scraper and choose either DuckDuckGo or Google and put in fly fishing and let it run. And then it'll get, gather for you all of the latest news. This is from Google's news sites and uh, um, any news uh, site. It grabs that information and puts it in the notepad file. And when you're creating your, um, your, your content to be used in the, in, in the WordPress revitalizer, it, um, you know, you put them in. So, so what you've got is a really good um, a blog post that's going to be created that's semantically related. It's got two or three embeds um, uh, on each page. And that, those embeds pass, um, they do follow links back to the, the original properties. Okay. Um, so this is the idea is that, you know, um, we've even got folders to rank, Google folders to rank. Uh, you can rank anything. Uh, the more space you're taking up on the front page of Google, the better. That's, that's how. Um, so what we've done is it creates a, a WordPress site. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can show one, Jay. Um, yeah, I can pull one up. Fluid coming yeah. fluid. Yeah, I'm on it. Okay. Okay. Let's just show you this, uh, the, the blog it creates. So what we do is we find an aged domain, which is in that area, which is in that niche. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, good. So I'm this not is seeing the blog. it. Yet. Okay, well, you, you go through it in this lab. Um, okay, so you can see the blog um, and the different keywords. So if we actually open one of these posts, it will take a while to open, but you'll see the content that gets added. So Stacking Magic allows us to edit the page title. So it first builds the page using the YouTube videos, but then Stacking Magic allows us to edit the title to include a call to action and make sure we're targeting the keywords we want. Mm-hmm. We've got a relevant YouTube video embedded. So we're stealing topical relevance from this video. Mm-hmm. You've got links built in mm-hmm. to the GMB mm-hmm. and to the money site. Mm-hmm. We then got some spun content where you can put banners in if you wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, again, the call to action banners. We've then start coming to the embeds that we have. So this is an actual Facebook post Mm. that's embedded. This is another Facebook post that's embedded. This is a Twitter moment that's embedded. So you can see the multiple tweets that are happening in there, Mm. all with links into our properties. Mm. Um, This is in fact a LinkedIn post that is embedded. We then have uh, a Reddit post that's embedded. Then we get down to some of our Google stuff. Um, we've got a dashboard. Oh, post to that thing. Yeah, we've got an image coming that's embedded that's geo optimized. We've got a few Pinterest stuff, um, Imgur. Then we've got a Google Slides. Um, what is this? Okay, yeah, another slide. Um, so, uh, so here, because you showed a lot of the social stuff, how important do you think the social signals are in the overall scheme of uh, ranking? Hmm. Extremely important because now Google is seeing, hey, this company is very active. They're active socially, people are sharing their stuff. Um, and uh, you know, it's uh, 
what, what it's doing is it's validating your um, your entity. You just just spoke about it earlier. It's validating all the entities that you've uh, um, previously sort of submitted to Google, and um, the, so that social uh, the different uh, the different social stuff is really important. It's just to to show that um, you are a recognized um, authority in this um, niche. It's directly okay. increasing your yeah. your brand footprint. So if you if you view the entity, the business as a brand, if you just had a website, as I said, you've got one square on the whole World Wide Web. But now with all the pieces that we've plugged in, and if you add social on top of that, you're just increasing the brand footprint from trusted, validated entities, which is helping Google connect the dots so that they can, with confidence, believe that your entity is who you say you are. Exactly. And the more places we can get the name, address, phone number on trusted entities, the more score Google keeps giving us. So when we start building mm. out and you said, well, how important is it? Everything's important. The more you do, the easier we're making it for Google to connect the dots to say that we're relevant with these keywords for these areas and we're prepared to service this proximity radius. And mm. as we keep building, you keep increasing that proximity so that your entity can be found further and further away for the keywords that you want to be found for in areas that you know, highly recommend it. Six powerful modules to help you dominate your market. Um, and this one's starting at $197 upfront and $20 per month or $397 annually or $847 lifetime, one-time payment. Um, so again, if you need any help or want some more information, Reach out, jjgmbgenius.com. We are to help you. Excellent, excellent.